as if being fat is a problem. I don't feel anything. I have no emotional attachment to losing weight. I'm not mad at anyone except myself. I'm completely disgusted with myself and how I look and how I feel. My first favorite thing about being fat on the internet is I get called all of my favorite animals, like cows, pigs, whales, and elephants. I also feel really ugly. No one even wants to look at me. No one even wants to talk to me. It's disgusting. And I know it's not. 100% me. I mean, yeah, I've gained some weight, but it's also the people here, the culture, the mindset. I mean, when I went to the dentist, the dentist called me fat. If I post an amazing picture of me in a bikini, I love that on the internet, people can see beyond my size, and they compliment me on things like my bravery. I know this is a favorites video, but I actually think it's kind of insulting. I mean, there are actual heroes out there. Me wearing a bikini isn't brave. I've never, ever had anyone say it to my face. A friend, an enemy, someone I've hurt, anyone I've broken up with, a friend. I've never had someone refer to me as fat to my face and then tell me I'm happy. And you know what it is. And that's why I don't want anyone to be mad at him. And this stings so much and it's so painful because he's right. I am fat. It's, you can take one look at me and I am. <laughs> I think any big change that you make in your life has to be built on a foundation of self-love. And I think that's what I've taught not only big girls, but girls of all sizes, is to make sure that any change you're making in your life and all actions that you're taking in your life are based on love. <laughs> like my friend Carly, she's so fucking pretty. It's just not fair. <laughs> Sid, you know... One of the reasons I think he's not attracted to me as much anymore, you know, because I've gained all the weight. I'm happy with myself at all sizes, but there are points when I feel like I need to lose weight. Like if I'm huffing and puffing when I'm going upstairs. Another one for me is if I run a mile and I'm close to the 20 minute mark. I like my mile to be around 14 to 15 minutes. If I'm near 20 minutes, I feel like I need to bump up my workouts in order to stay at my personal quota. He justified it by, he's like, well, you talk shit about a lot of people in the minute someone says anything to you. And I said to him, I was like, you know what, you're right. Me saying I don't like somebody and confiding in you or joking with you about people we don't like, it justifies you calling your girlfriend fat in front of a TV producer and his assistant. And it's been like this for like at least a couple weeks. I've told him from the beginning, don't don't tell me not to eat something. Don't tell don't come at my food. Don't come at my weight. It's something that's so, as you guys can tell, it cuts so deep. This is what I dislike so much about weight loss. I think weight loss is a beautiful thing. It can be a great journey and process. It can be a learning experience. A fitness goal in itself can be a learning process and experience. My last favorite thing about being fat on the internet is I get endless unsolicited diet and nutrition advice. Did you know not putting cream in my coffee will solve all of my problems? As if being fat is a problem. Yeah, I've been having dairy, which is a fruit that I really enjoy. And she said, oh, no, 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 you're so fat. You're so fat. Dairy is sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> I've lost over 120 pounds on this channel. If you go back to my very first video, I'm a lot smaller than I am now. I lost that weight and I never mentioned one thing about it. The only thing that I ever did was a clothing haul with smaller size clothing. I lost the weight and said nothing because once you say something, every, the peanut gallery, they come, they appear. And I'm not here for it. You should never comment on when someone else is eating, ever. It's not your business. You shouldn't comment on someone else's choices um, for fitness, it's not your business. Like those are things that are just personal. Weight loss and wellness are personal choices and they're not to be commented on by outside sources. I see people boiling down others' worth based on a number alone daily on the internet. It's literally everywhere. Instead of paying attention to someone's intellectual value, their accomplishments, their morals, the things that actually matter, it's all a number. They'll try to discredit you completely 
because of what your body looks like. What I do have a problem with is individuals losing weight because someone else tells them they should or because they hate themselves so much that they feel like they need to lose weight to be happy. Le ciel. This is not going to be like a catty, shallow, hateful video um, saying that Eden Jacks is an idiot. The point of this video is actually not at all to say that Eden Jacks is an idiot. I think that her peculiar corner of the body positive, fat positive, uh, demimond raises some interesting questions for us to talk about. She comments herself that many of the body positive YouTubers hate her and criticize her for not being truly body positive because her actual situation is that she has already lost over 100 pounds and she is in the process of losing another 50 pounds. And that really changes the significance of a lot of the things she says in a subtle and profound way. So she kind of puts up this disclaimer, this sort of philosophical abstract point that you ought to be happy with yourself at any size and any weight. However, she's lost 100 pounds and she's trying to lose another 50 pounds. That's quite a bit different from someone who uh, uh, makes the claim that you should be happy in any weight and therefore they don't care if they remain massively obese or even if they gain another 50 pounds or gain another 100 pounds or something. So that's not, not her situation. Um, one of the things that leaps out to me, I got, I got three points I want to talk about. I don't know, last things first. You may have noticed that she goes on this sort of odd rant against her audience, complaining, basically saying, how dare you comment on her health, her diet, or her appearance, her weight. And if you just look at her YouTube channel or her Instagram presence or anything else she's doing on social media, it is entirely devoted to her health, her diet, her exercise, her weight, her body. That's what all these videos are about. So I find that really quite bizarre. Now, you know, if people were commenting on the current Prime Minister of Germany or the current Prime Minister of France, or even the President of the United States, if all they're talking about, one of those people, is their body weight, their health, their diet, their exercise, you'd say, hey, come on, guys, this is a little bit tacky, this is a little bit crass. It's fair game to talk about a politician's health, weight, and exercise to some extent, but how can we uh, monomaniacally focus on this extent? The focus is created by Eden Jacks. The focus is created by this fully grown woman, So I was gonna say young woman. To my knowledge, she's 29 years old. She's 29 on YouTube and Instagram. It's a fully grown woman. And you are choosing to put out one video after another talking about what you're eating, what exercise you're doing, how you look in a bikini, etc. So are you really in a position to complain? Specifically, she complains that someone's body, food, and fitness is personal. That it's off limits to comment on that on the internet. And she herself is earning money offering a commentary and critique about her own body fitness. And, and, and she wraps this up. This quote really stood out to me, that she faults her audience for paying attention to the body, the mere body, the person's mere beauty, fitness, weight, physical appearance, instead of, quote, someone's intellectual value. When I scroll through her list of videos on YouTube, do I see even a, a single video that in any way presents or reflects on her intellectual value. Now, I, I have over 1,000 videos on my channel. I can't even say that a really large percentage of them are presenting my, my intellectual values, but there are hundreds within that 1,000 total. Um, you know, you could look at the book reviews, the discussions of politics, activism, uh, philosophy, history, uh, even just my work experience or something. There, there's a lot of conversation of intellectual substance on my channel. So, you know, yes, I have had this kind of um, criticism directed at me. I've Sometimes it's been sane and reasonable. Sometimes it's been insane and unreasonable. And sometimes I feel like, look, guys, my channel, I have a couple videos mentioning my exercise and diet, that, that side of my life. But why would there be such overwhelming emphasis on, on that side of my channel? And the truth is, the main reason why people do it is that they're basically trying to drag me down to their level and try to, I don't know, debate or discuss something where they, they feel they can win. They feel that they're, they're superior to me. And, uh, 
you know, it's it's not just sort of stereotypical jock characters who do that. If anything, the opposite. Most of the time, it's the um, the stereotypical hippies, the people who are into so-called alternative health and raw fruitarian diet. People on that side normally try to criticize me and attack me and drag me down on the basis of my diet, my exercise, or my or my body weight. Um, I, I do, though, by the way, if you want to see videos about me, I, when I speak about diet and exercise, the main thing I emphasize is I'm not an athlete. I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of patience for this. Here's how I manage to get a certain amount of exercise, maintain a certain amount of strength within the limitations of my own life. Some of those limitations are imposed upon me, and some of them are limitations I uh, impose on myself. I was talking to a guy who was an ex-bodybuilder just a couple of weeks ago, and I, I asked him, I said, well, you know, wasn't the biggest, spending three hours a day at the gym, didn't that start to, you know, bother you? What you're losing out on in life just by spending so many hours at the gym, and he immediately agreed with me, and he said that was the main reason why he quit bodybuilding. And I had to reflect on also how much time I've spent in the gym the last several months, and every minute I'm at the gym, I know I'm not studying Chinese, I'm not studying history or politics, I'm not writing essays or doing other positive, or organizing vegan political activism, doing something for the movement, doing something for myself, for my family, for education, what have you. But yes, it is bizarre, truly bizarre, and I think blameworthy on, on a deep level when you see someone who's basically a health and fitness even if body positive health and fitness blogger, when this is this is your lane, claiming, reproaching her audience because she claims her audience fails to appreciate her intellectual value. Instead of paying attention to someone's intellectual value. You guys might have thought I was going to be asking tough questions about her, you know, the shape she's in or how much weight she's going to use. No, Eden Jacks, I think you've got to ask yourself tough questions. At age 29, what is your intellectual value? You, you can't just assume this is something sacrosanct. Uh, maybe if people were judging you by your intellectual value, you'd be judged much more harshly. You know, the, the intellectual world, it's competitive, it's fierce, it's, you know, uh, you'd be subject to criticism of a very different kind from the type of criticism you've been complaining about in this video if you actually step into the ring intellectually, whether that's about politics, the future of the vegan movement, or anything else. But still, I'd love to see her make the transition. I would love to see Eden Jack's channel tomorrow stop being about weight loss, stop being about food, stop being about hair and beauty products and bathing suits, and, and for her to commit herself to living up to, to her own boasts here, that she has some kind of intellectual value she wants the world to pay attention to instead. Okay, you got her attention. Show and prove. Let's, let's see what you got. All right, but... Um, Something that might have slipped past some people in the audience, but I, I think is worth dwelling on for just a moment here, is her philosophical claim that any changes you make in your life should be based on love. It's interesting. I mean, philosophically, it's an interesting claim, and I think it is 100% false. I think that we make changes in our lives based on really basic instincts, and one of the most basic and fundamental instincts, not just for human beings, but at least for all mammals, is actually curiosity. You know, one of the reasons to change your life, I mean, you can kind of express that the inverse of curiosity maybe is boredom. So that's boredom. One of the reasons to change your life, one of the reasons to become more self-disciplined, physically, mentally, intellectually, to seek out higher education, a better job, uh, to travel to a new part of the world, to take on humanitarian work, to take on political responsibilities, activism. One of the reasons is actually curiosity. But in talking about this broader spectrum of intellectual, ethical, political interests, how could we even describe our motivation as so-called self-love? How I understand she's making this very limited and specific point about weight loss being motivated by self-love rather than self-hatred. But I think, you know, on a profound level, it's contradictory and even ludicrous. And that starts to become apparent if we just take the concept of self-love and try to apply it to some other examples in our own life and experience. Now, look. Uh, using myself as an example because it's convenient. Why did I decide to leave Canada and move to Cambodia? When I was still in Canada, I was still in downtown Toronto, why did I get the books off of the library shelf 
and start studying the Cambodian language. There are still uploads on the internet proving that was the order of operations. I ended up in Cambodia years later after living in Laos, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Hong Kong, a bunch of other places. But I got to Cambodia eventually. What made me, you know, do that? Is it was it quote unquote self love? Can I say I, I decided to make these changes in my life based on on self love? I think that's profoundly incoherent. I think curiosity is an element. I think you can even talk about fear. Fear is the most primal instinct of all, and a lot of our behaviors in life are guided by fear, which can include the fear of having a meaningless life. Not necessarily the fear of death, but the fear that when your when your life ends, um, it wasn't worth anything. What about you know the myriad sources of dissatisfaction, contempt, hatred, competition, and revenge? I mean, you know, competition is a very culturally and psychologically complex phenomenon. You know, the the desire to be excellent. You know, uh, the desire to be competitive. You know, so many people today will write a book and just dump it on the internet as a PDF. And they don't care who reads it. I sympathize. I mean, you know, a lot of things like this. But what if your desire is not just to have a book that's ignored, but to have a, a book that's the best of the best, a book that really earns the time and attention and interest and passion of the readers? There are competitive instincts, and there's dissatisfaction with one's own life, one's own culture, as I've, I've recently talked about, and so on and so forth. Absolutely none of these things can be encompassed within, analyzed, or explained in terms of self-love. And I think it's also true that they can't be analyzed or explained in terms of self-hatred. Guys, um... I understand the complaint Eden Jax is offering here. I myself have been uh, relentlessly pilloried and attacked for being a quote-unquote fat vegan. And I've responded to this by uploading pictures of myself with my shirt off, flexing my muscles, and talking about the fact that I can do 200 push-ups a day and stuff, and say, hey, look, you know, my life is not about being as lean as possible or as strong as possible or riding a bicycle 100 kilometers uh, a day. However, you know, I do hold myself to a certain standard. And, you know, in the world's most polite and self-effacing way, Eden Jax is actually making the same point I make to my viewers. Eden Jax says that she sets certain standards for herself. She says, well, she needs to be able to run a mile in 14 minutes. She needs to be able to get up a staircase without being out of breath. Well, that's not quite as demanding as the standards I set for myself. I need to be able to do 200 push-ups on my knuckles while I'm waiting for an aircraft to take off in an airport lobby which I'm infamous for doing, by the way. Um, my girlfriend, Melissa, has seen me doing push-ups in airport lobbies around the world at this point. Uh, it keeps, uh, keeps my life interesting. I, and may shock and horrify other people who are waiting for the same plane, but hey, so be it. Different strokes. Um, you know, uh, we do choose um, arbitrary goals and limits to oppose ourselves, and it's interesting to see Eden Jacks is, is actually using a, a kind of vocabulary that's very familiar to me, very similar to the way I, I talk about these things myself. Um, but if you flip that around, why? What's the point? Ultimately, why do we create these standards for us to live up to? I got to tell you, for me, it's not beauty. It's not the admiration of others. It's not to be beautiful or to be attractive or what have you. And I don't think Eden Jacks actually grapples with that. She claims in a kind of misleading way that you shouldn't uh, base these goals on what other people think is beautiful, i.e. that you should base it just on what you yourself think is beautiful. Okay, I don't agree with that either. I think that ultimately the question is, how are we going to lead a meaningful life? How are we going to make a positive difference in the world? And yeah, it starts with being able to walk up a staircase. It may also involve being prepared to fall down a staircase and to get up and maybe do okay in a fist fight when you scrape yourself off the ground at the bottom of the staircase. It may involve carrying your luggage in and out of the subway system here in Paris, France, and all kinds of other challenges. But ultimately, I mean, health and the body has got to be a means to an end. It's not going to be an end in itself for any of us. Um, I remember a conversation I had about Buddhist philosophy where the guy I was talking to said to me, he said that he thought that in Buddhism, um, the basic concept was that the mind is your temple. And I disagree with him. I say, no, I wouldn't say that's true at all. I'd say that in uh, Theravada Buddhism, um, it's more like uh, uh, the body is a washcloth for the mind. So, <laughs> you know, that uh, uh, if you think of the mind as a lens or the mind as being like a pair of glasses, that you're trying to keep your body in good shape um, so that you can think clearly. 
And then again, thinking clearly is not an in itself. Ultimately, this kind of vigilance, self-discipline, and preparation must be for some purpose. And I think Eden Jacks is skating close to questioning what that purpose is in her own life when she says she wants to be judged not for the number that shows up when she stands on a scale, not for how she looks when she puts on a bikini, but uh, uh, for her own intellectual substance. Well, now it's up to you, Eden Jacks, and all you wonderful people in my audience to step up and show us what kind of intellectual substance you've got. And guess what? The grass is not greener on the other side of that hill. However nasty and backstabbing and <laughs> unkind you think people are about your obesity or about your weight loss struggles or you're going to the gym and working out, people are going to be 10,000 times more unkind if you start trying to do original research, if you start trying to, uh, uh, I don't know, challenge conventional wisdom or deal with inconvenient truths of any kind, whether that's under the heading of politics, philosophy, or otherwise. Abat le ciel.